just giving it a few seconds just to make sure that it's going to give everyone a minute or so to jump on if they'd like to join this creative writing stream. I'm going to be doing this every Wednesday just to kind of help people that are wanting to get published, that have questions about writing, uh, that sort of thing. For those of you that don't know, when I'm not gaming, I'm writing books <laughs> and I also do audio books and YouTube tutorial videos. Um, I do tutorial videos over writing and gaming. So uh, if you check on my channel right now actually, you will see that I have my gun perks and uh, trap perks video up on there. I had a few people ask if I had any tutorial videos, so I put that up on there today. I'm a little tired from earlier stream. Um, went and grabbed some lunch. And I just kind of wanted to calm down a little bit before I went into our workshop today, but I'm excited to be here with you guys. Watched Allura earlier. We actually got to see Allura on camera. It's kind of exciting. So as you can see, I am a notes person. I like it old school, you guys. Make tons of notes for all my tutorial vids. And really helps me get my thoughts um, in order. Okay, just wanted to wait a few minutes. Make sure we've got my chat up here, and I think we're ready to go. So common question number two that I get when I'm at conventions is character outlining and world building. So this week we're going to talk about character outlining, and I think next week the secondary vote we got the most on Twitter when we took a poll was everyone wanted to know about world building techniques, not just for DMs and for gaming, but for people who are wanting to get published. So I thought today, let's talk about character outlines. So let's see here, let's see if it's gonna bring up my capture screen. Thought I'd have a little bit of a visual today so you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> there we go. Whoa, it goes on forever. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up our font a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it, so let's let's bring that font up, you guys. Bring it up. I love Futura book. It's nice. 24 might not even be high enough. Let's try 36, just in case. So, I can't show you some of my, I actually thought about pulling out some of my old school notes I used to take on Hell's Gate, which is a novel I'm currently working on. It's a series. We have books one and two finished, and book three is set for being released um, either third quarter this year or early next year. Um, waiting on that from my editor before I give any release details. But how I outline my characters is I usually handwrite them, but I thought for simplicity, we'd go ahead and write it here. So my main character is Celeste in a way. Uh, she is, uh, let's, let's figure out her identity. So here's the things that I wanted to keep in mind when I was writing up a character outline for my main character. Uh, what type of person is she? What is she interested in? What are her motivations as a person? And when keeping those all in mind, I started writing sort of a skeletal structure for her, you know. So we would do adopted out of Japan as a child. Um, that's obviously not part of her identity, 
like thought process wise, but that is where she's from. So you want to take where she's from into account. Um, then we're going to take a look at her motivations. Um, my degree was neuroscience. So one of the things that I look at is what are, what are someone's mental motivations and why they do the things that they do. And this helps for all your main characters, your secondary characters, or we're going to look at that a little differently. But I love to just sit down with these, um, you know, your however many main characters you have and what style and genre you're going to write in. Uh, this is the way that I do it. So now we've got, okay, we know she's adopted out of Japan, right? So we have that fact about her. Um, her motivations. Let's go ahead and hit tab so we can bring that down here in our secondary file. We're going to say our motivations for Celeste is John, which is her significant other. And he's just recently kind of come into her life. Um, she's, you know, engaged. So we add that. She's engaged to him. And we'll do like a, a category for John just in a second that correlates with Celeste. But right now we're figuring out what Celeste's motivations are. And they all kind of want to tie in together just so you have that floor, that story very fluid. Um, it just flows together nicely. So what else are her motivations? Her students. Okay, she's a university, uh, you know, teacher. So we add that. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and add in here that she's a music teacher. And keep in mind, guys, when you are organizing your writing, you really want to go down systematically, like basically think in a more linear fashion for each character. This is going to not or only organize your story, it's going to organize your thought process um, per chapter. Now, so a lot of us, I will say, as writers, tend to skip around. Um, I'm not that way. <laughs> I write it out chapter by chapter. I don't like skipping around unless I 100% know how I'm going to end a story. And so sometimes I'll actually write the ending first, and then I'll come back and write the beginning and the middle to get to that ending. More often than not, no, though, if you're going to be a normal writer, you're going to skip around a little bit as things come to you. Okay, so her students are going to be a motivation for her. She's dedicated to them. Um, John is going to be her number one, her numero uno. So we put that up top because that's, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when, he, when we think of Celeste's identity is that uh, she basically lives her life around him because that's, you know, that's who she is as a person. Um, which later on, we actually address that, like basically the codependency that she comes upon with her issues with her mom passing away. So in the story, um, this isn't giving away too much because it happens, you find out about it within the first I think chapter or two, but her mother passed away. Um, and this is her adoptive mother. So we have to think about how this is going to affect her decision making as a character. <laughs> hey, Bibars, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we have to think about how that's going to affect Celeste in the story. Uh, how is that going to change her motivations? Um, how is that going to change her interaction with other people? Um, in the story, because of the fact that her mother passed away from an extremely aggressive cancer, um, she sees herself as cursed. So we can add a little note on that with Celeste's mother. Um, and these are just all motivations and reasons why a character might behave the way they do. 
<laughs> awesome, glad to hear it. So we just do a little basic outline for that and you can make yours as intricate as you like per character. Um, I usually get pretty in depth with my characters so I subcategorize my categories. <laughs> Sounds boring, right? But no, it really, really helps. Okay, so now we know our ma her main motivations. Uh, this is a key element here, so maybe I might um, go through and highlight this, or you know, something like that, and just say, "Hey, this is a big thing here." Like she sees herself as cursed so maybe she goes to a psychologist weekly maybe she struggles through um, personal issues with death abandonment that sort of thing maybe that's why she's so obsessed with things with you know working with john you know and actually we could highlight this in a different color let me go through here and highlight this in red red for love or danger danger this bitch cry <laughs> awesome. Oh, I love your colors, B bars. That's that's a neat little it's like a a reddish brown. That's nice. Very nice. Okay, so we know now that her motivation for the way she behaves psychologically is the passing. She's also adopted, so she's not native of uh, America. She, actually, we should add that up here. Um, so we add, she grew up here. And here, I mean here is in US, so I am obviously a natural US citizen, so I would add here for me. But that would make sense to you as the writer. I guess if you wanted to get technical you could add us here okay so now we're starting to get a feel for this character right who is she okay she's an adopted child okay what else do we know about her okay we also know that she loves uh, art okay and she loves painting, sculptures, that sort of thing. In the beginning of the story, um, we go into detail from her perspective on the Baroque era paintings, uh, the colors in the room. Describing from her perspective is letting the readers know that she loves um, music and art. Okay, so that kind of helps you frame out what this character is going to be about. And then not only do we have what the character is going to be about, how they view the world and their motivations, but we're also going to see how outward, um, I guess, there's a word I'm looking for, words, words. So how people affect the way she behaves um, through their actions. Since we know these are her motivations, we now can kind of get a sense for what her actions um, are in response to that. So why she acts that way. And I don't know why that made it so small or changed my font, but sure. <laughs> Let's bring this back up. So now this all ties into why she behaves the way she does. Okay, for character development with these character outlines, you want to write their motivation and all of that, but you also want to progress with that character. We don't want two-dimensional characters. So eventually you want to write an outline that goes into depth of how this character is going to change later. Why is she going to change? You know, what happens in the story? to change this character. We gotta have that tragedy, right? That epic tragedy. And it doesn't even have to be a tragedy. Um, it could be that moment where the character becomes self-aware of something that's happened 
you know, for instance, in the story, Celeste's father, um, you find out later on, he knows more than he's letting on about his adopted daughter. Oh, hey, Admiral. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, your name colors, v -bars, when you're when you're in chat, because it changes. So it's going, what is going to make our characters become self-aware? Now, the tragedy trope is something that every writer likes to use because it really develops, it hones that character. You know, in Harry Potter, there were several deaths um, and those needed to happen to progress the character into a certain part of the story. So when you're writing out your character outline, you not only want to develop them as a person, as you would in real life, and that real life person's experience, you're going to want to take other things that happen into account in the story and how that person would react to it emotionally. So when you take all of that into account, oh hey, let's, let's check our chat really quick. I see it moving, hold on. when does the story take place? Are you asking for the setting for this particular story? Okay, so in this particular story that I'm just giving an example of in the Hell's Gate series, um, the story is taking place in modern times, so it's a contemporary fiction. Uh, this is contemporary fantasy. Okay, um, getting back on track. Hold on, Chess, one moment, and I'll see. I'll let you see how we interact. So now maybe let's come down here and let's, we know, I don't want to give away too much. So I'll, <laughs> I'll go ahead and say maybe uh, we'll do her father. And Celeste's adoptive father. Come on, word, work with me here. There we go. Uh, Celeste's adoptive father is Scott. And what do we know about Scott? And uh, now since Scott is a secondary character in the story, um, it's not gonna be as in-depth as the main character, Celeste, but we are gonna come in and we're gonna go, what are his motivations as her father? Well, his first, his first motivation, even though obviously she's adopted, is Celeste, right? Celeste is his little girl. Go ahead and take that bold off. It's a bit obnoxious. So his daughter. Okay. And also what we find interesting about Scott is that he has an air of mystery about him because you can kind of tell with his cryptic thinking from his perspective that he knows more than he's letting on. flat earthers god it's just awful flat earthers are awful <laughs> so we know he has cryptic thinking which leads us to his motivation of celeste through protection so what is he protecting We know that Scott, you know, as I mentioned earlier, knows something about Celeste that he's not letting on. And this is going to help develop Celeste's character more for her motivation. So what you can see is that, yes, Scott is a character that we see his perspective from in the first book, but he's going to open up even more as a character by the second story because the first book is just sort of a way to introduce your characters to everyone. And this is going to line up 
where your story is going to go, how you're going to build your world. Is this world going to be, uh, you know, singular within this one person? Is it going to be told from a more global perspective? With this story, I wanted to tell it from different perspectives. So we have Celeste as the main character, um, we have Scott as secondary, and then we have Daniel and John. So we tell the story from four different perspectives. Um, if you've ever read George R.R. R. Martin's stories, he also <laughs> tends to do this thing, but I thought there was really gonna be only this one way for me to tell it because there's so much going on within this world that we need to see it at different um, intervals with different people as we later on discover who Celeste really is. <laughs> Her parents are flat earther cave people. <laughs> Admiral seems to be enjoying um, talking about flat earthers today. So as we can see, we've outlined that a Celeste is adopted from Japan. She was raised by uh, parents in the US. Her motivations are John. She's obsessed with her past, uh, with her mother passing away. She loves art. Oh, and one of the most important things we probably shouldn't leave out. She sees things, man. <laughs> She's seen some stuff. So Celeste sees a uh, supernatural thing. She sees little creatures. She sees spirits. She sees demons. Uh, and it happens all on her 24th birthday when the floodgates open. Um, basically, the gates of hell. And hell fires from, or let's see, fire from the sky. Aha! So now we know that what I, what I try to impress upon readers when they're reading the story is we're not really sure if we can trust our main character, right? Is all this stuff actually happening or is she just freaking insane? And so you have to think about what your motivation as the author is for the reader. Where do you want the reader to go mentally? Do you want them to question your main character? Do you want them to know exactly what's happening? Uh, it really depends on the type of story you're wanting to get across or convey. For me, I want things to be a mystery for the first part of the book until we get just a few chapters in, people start getting little snippets of what's actually happening until we hit a certain point and we realize, oh shit, this might actually be real. And you always want to keep them questioning, keep them wondering. That's what keeps your readers hooked. So now that we know, uh, you know, our secondary character, Scott here, this guy, um, we know that his motivation is his daughter, especially since his wife. We know his wife passed away from cancer, but you know, his motivation for caring for his daughter, he becomes more doting of a father after he loses his wife because his daughter is really his last connection to his wife. Uh, he's still obsessed over Kotone, is her name. And we know that Celeste actually took Kotone's last name, Inoue, oops, okay, um, so we know that Scott is also trying to foster Celeste's, um, I guess, native birthplace, so we also get the sense that he's a very nurturing, caring person who tries to also let his daughter feel pride for where she comes from. So already we're starting to get a feel for this guy. He's tough, 
Um, he's a CEO, so that's another core part of his being is he's a CEO of a consulting company. Which means, you know, he's got to make the hard choices, especially to get to where he did, especially in a consulting company. Extremely cutthroat, right? So we know this guy gets shit done. Business, as we call it. We call it business. <laughs> it's business time. It's business time. Oh, yeah, I know. I've seen it all day today. Ugh. It's annoyed me. Activate your windows. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got it all installed yesterday, but I was like, ah, I'll activate it later. All right, so now we know his motivation, and that's bothering me. Be gone, demon. Tab, what is wrong with you? No, okay, that's better. So now that we know that about Scott, we can see what his motivations are. Um, towards Celeste are going to be. We also know about his world. Uh, secondary to Scott is his right hand woman, Lucy. And we're going to add Lucy here because she's not really a main character, especially not in the first story. Um, she gets more of a part in book two, but Lucy's going to be this uh, She's the sexy assistant, you know. But she's not just an assistant. She's everything to Scott because she kind of holds his life together. Uh, capitalize. And basically she takes care of everything from appointments to helping Scott get organized with meetings to booking his flights to everything. Um, and it helps that she looks good, right? So we've got a little bit of a... Uh, tension between the two. That's cool. No problem, Bebars. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Have a good day. So we know Lucy's there. Lucy's there for Scott, and she's going to play more of a role later on. We also know that she helped raise uh, Celeste. So we also know she's close with Celeste, and uh, she helps Celeste with uh, company stuff as well. Um, Celeste works for her father's company, and Lucy helps. So Celeste can also speak Japanese, and since Scott does business deals with Japan, he often brings Celeste along when he goes on business trips. So we know, yes, when it's business time. So we know that's kind of where Lucy falls in in the first book, and we're going to go in and add more to her later because her character starts developing a little more as the story begins to unfold. So as you can see, our outline's kind of shaping up nicely. Um, it's not the most clean outline. You can always come in and edit it later, like, oh, I don't like how big these letters are, or you know, whatever. I'm trying to make it to where you guys can see here, at least a little bit, hopefully. Um, character motivations, and how it's going to tie into our what? Our world. So how do these characters tie in to our contemporary, hopefully we spelled that right, yes, um, contemporary fiction. Now I typically like to write um, contemporary fantasy, but I like a subgenre of fantasy called dark fantasy. What I like about dark fantasy is it has um, horror elements. But it's not necessarily a horror story. I just like to pull in the elements into someone's everyday life and go, how is this going to affect everything in the story? And why is this horror element important? How do these characters um, find the horror in their everyday situation. And then we come to find out that there's external external forces at play. Um, 
and I love to take supernatural forces to just screw with people's lives. <laughs> if you've ever read uh, Peter Klein, um, I believe it's called, um, I think it's 14 is the name of his book. Hopefully I got that right. It's either 14 or 16. I know it's a number and I'm drawing a blank, but his stuff um, takes a lot of Lovecraftian ideas and puts them into contemporary um, he also does contemporary fiction and historical fiction too. He likes to mess with uh, historical fiction, which I read in uh, his latest book. I think it was called The Fold. Loving his stuff so far. Definitely an author I recommend. And he's fairly active on Twitter. So um, now that we know a little bit about outlining our characters' motivations and then you know, these sub characters that come in that affect our main characters, we can get an idea for how we're going to continue our character outlining. So now we have our main characters. Well, what about our characters that are secondary characters? They're not necessarily main characters, um, but they're still there and they still have a voice in the story. So for instance, in my story, we have, um, we have uh, the Western mythology of angels, demons, um, that sort of thing. And then we have the Eastern mythology specifically out of Japan uh, for this particular story. And um, we have um, Japanese deities. And the ones that are going to be told in my story was the main goddess. We have uh, Ama Terasu, Honorable, um, August Goddess of the Sun. It's kind of hard to translate that into English, but basically she is the sun goddess. Uh, she plays a big role in the story. Um, Western mythos. We have angels, demons, god, um, you know, that sort of thing. So we're taking the two stories and we're blending them together in a seamless, you know, philosophy. So one of the things that you're going to do when you're doing character outlines is if you know their motivation in the story is uh, maybe like Kotone, for example. Um, she'll keep coming up because we're going to do flashbacks, which Kotone, uh, Inoue, is uh, Celeste's mother. And we know that she believes in spirits. And so I, I did a lot of studies, and not just any spirits, we're talking about specifically uh, Shinto and um, mythology or mythological creatures. Okay, so one of the things that I did, and you don't have to go as far as I did, I actually traveled to Japan twice just so I could gather enough research over uh, culture, everyday life, um, thought process, how they, how Easterners or the Japanese Easterners to be specific think versus Westerners. And each one of these um, ideologies are different. So I know the Western mythos and mythology. I grew up with an extremely conservative Christian family. And so I grew up on these stories. This I'm good on, right? And then of course my stepfather was Chinese. And so I also grew up on his stories and also uh, Japanese mythology and history because he, he enjoyed reading some stories. So now we have these beliefs to tie in with what Celeste might be experiencing mentally since she comes from a background of Japan, but she was raised here in the US 
with a mother who was also raised in Japan and came over to the US when she married Scott. So when we tie all of those in, um, we kind of get a feel for how we're going to run that story together in the beginning so that the audience can understand it. Clarity is extremely important when writing something like this from a cultural perspective. So as a Westerner, we're not going to know who uh, Amaterasu is, right? And you don't want to just spell it out for people. It's called an info dump. You don't just info dump when writing. That gets on people's nerves. Amaterasu is a sun goddess. Stop. It's <laughs> That's not how it goes. So you're going to want to more describe from the character's perspective, like, um, you know, maybe how the god or goddess appears. Um, maybe add little things like in the story, I have a uh, nogitsune, which is a trickster spirit. And I kind of have them in a fox shape. They're known as shapeshifters. And you just add things like that organically in your story as you describe from the character's perspective. That way we get an idea of what it is they're talking about, but we don't necessarily have to have that info dump with the characters and why the characters believe this way, if that makes sense. Okay, so the main thing I'm gonna tell you is when you're outlining, you know, you don't have to make it so convoluted. You could literally just take half of what I'm telling you to outline each character and fill the rest in for yourself if you feel like that's enough. But the main thing is to get that character's motivation down and what's going to progress that character um, so that they get to that ending piece in your story. How do they end up becoming the being that, you know, let's say a deity. We discover that Celeste is a deity and she ultimately has the decision between world destruction and letting everything survive. Like, how did we get to that point in the story from just contemporary music teacher who loves art and misses her mom and has a slight obsession with her boyfriend to mm, all-knowing deity? So this is just a few steps I hope help you today um, with character outlining. Feel free to ask any questions about uh, parts you're struggling in with your writing if you know you need to know more about character outline and how to break it down um, if there was something you didn't understand let me know message me comment anything and i will get back to you as soon as i get it let's go ahead and take our capture off <laughs> So the main thing we've learned today is that with outlining, it's important to set out, um, you know, carve out some time in your day, whether it's on a journal like I like to do, or if you want to outline on your computer in Word and just go, what's this character about? Um, what do we need to know about their motivations? How are we going to progress their character in the story? and um, how other characters affect their decision making. So just keep these things in mind when you're, you know, you're writing your story. And um, publishers and editors love a three-dimensional character. Give them flaws. You know, Celeste gets too uptight. Um, she's too hard on herself. She tends to... Um, kind of hermit herself away from everybody else and she gets attached too easily to things because of her mother's death. So we know she's an extremely emotional person um, who loves easily. So give your character those flaws that people can relate to and then you don't have to worry about it. But thanks for joining us today on our Writer Workshop Wednesday. If you have any questions, feel free to comment um, in my chat or on YouTube and whatnot. Hey, Shoeless.
welcome. <laughs> Just tying things up now. Um, thanks so much for joining me today on Fortnite and for our writing workshop. I hope this helps you uh, talking with me for the past hour and hopefully it hasn't been too convoluted. I'm so tired, you guys. <laughs> Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.